I know that I'm I'm old because I can remember black and white television. And you know, you have a lot of people out there, younger folks, they even refuse to watch anything in black and white because well, that's simply old fashioned and it can't teach them anything about modernity or modern life. The only way I ever got my daughter to watch any black and white TV with me uh, one of her friends at school looked just like Beaver Cleaver, so she would watch the show along with me because it amused her, the resemblance. And once in a great while, she would watch the Munsters with me, but it was a bit of a tougher sell. It's 9.07. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 44 on our way, perhaps maybe in some spots, to 70 before the day is over. Uh, just a quick note, quick mention of weather, and that means that we should point out weather as a service of Mountain Home Auto Ranch in Mountain Home. And uh, I'm trying to come up with a slogan of my own for that. I've been saying it's the candy store for adults. It certainly is for me when I drive through the parking lot there and just start having all of those notions that I'd like that one and that one and that one and that one. You can't have everything you want, of course, in life, and that's one of those early lessons most of us learn. I bring this black and white era of TV up because when I was young, there used to be a public, well, it was a commercial. I can't say public service announcement because obviously the churches had to pay for it, or you would think they would have paid for it. There was a television commercial, and it would show a fellow, it was in black and white, it would show a fellow sitting on his couch in his living room, and he's watching an old movie about Christians being chewed up by the lions in the arena back in Rome. And he's, 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 he's uncomfortable as he's watching this happen. And then a voiceover says, it wasn't always easy being a Christian. And then there's a pause and the voiceover says, it still isn't. And I think that, that that is a notion that most people out there who are practicing Christians, they take to heart. They know exactly, especially in this day and age, they know exactly what we happen to be talking about. It's the way, there was an episode, a friend of mine told me about this some years ago. I was never... I liked it, but I was never a huge, I just didn't have the time to sit down and watch the Seinfeld program. There's an episode where one of the main characters, she's going out with a guy who goes to church. And all through the show, they're making fun of the notion that this guy, gee, kind of strange, there's somebody who goes to church. And a lot of us have had to deal with that through our lives. Tim Tebow was doing an interview a few years ago, a group of reporters, and one of them sarcastically asked him a question about the fact, are you still a virgin? And he said, why, yes. And then there were some giggles. And then he said, why would you all be so surprised by somebody who lives by their faith? And then all of a sudden there was silence and they stared at the floor and the, the media hordes, they just scraped their feet and scuffed their feet on the floor not knowing what to say in that particular situation. Because they were embarrassed. That's what this really comes down to. That's why they don't like you. Because they haven't tried to show any discipline in their lives. I'm bringing all of this up. Rod Dreher uh, was making an appearance last night. He's written a book called The Benedict Option. It's, it's not a book about the Pope Emeritus, Benedict the Sixteenth. It's a book about a medieval saint by the name of Benedict who said at the time that living amongst the worldly was probably not where Christians should be. In other words, we should retreat from the hazards of the everyday world, and just be amongst ourselves. And, and, and frankly, that way you can concentrate on what's really important in life. He's written a book about this. He was making an appearance, Dreher, that is, not Pope Benedict. Rod Dreher was making an appearance, although Pope Benedict probably would agree with that. He's gone off and lived in isolation himself. Rod Dreher making an appearance on Tucker Carlson's program last night on the Fox News Channel and explaining that Christians lost the culture war. And in a moment after this clip, I've got a second clip which I think dovetails with this. Take a listen. Christianity, as it has been historically understood, is no longer at the center of our nation and, our, and of how we think of ourselves. I mean, if you huh. look at the numbers in, in the United States of the people who are falling away from Christianity, especially in the millennial generation, it's catastrophic. We've never seen anything like this. Plus, the content of the belief uh, that Christians have is very far from historic Orthodox Christianity. The Notre right. Dame sociologist Christian Smith has talked about how we believe now this total feel-good, squishy, 
christianity that is not biblical christianity. and this is what i mean. we are in a post-christian situation in that sense. it's we've forgotten what it means to be christian. stephen so what and i should just point out to our viewers who may just be tuning tuning in. you are a christian and you're not applauding this trend, merely noting it. but you have a prescription for sincere christians in america as to how to respond to this. what is it? That's right, Tucker. I'm a conservative Christian myself, and I think this is a terrible thing that's happening in our country. But I think that we have to wake up as Christians and realize the situation we're actually in and quit telling ourselves this happy, clappy stories about, about America. And we have to get back to traditional Christianity. We have to go back and rediscover our roots uh, in terms of what we believe, but also in terms of the faith we practice. We have got to place our church and our faith above everything else right now and really dig deep. Easy? No. On the other hand, think about modernity. Think about the world we live in. Think about mass media, what it has done to the people who live in this country, especially to our young people who we've now gone, what, four generations where we've been bombarding them with mixed messages or messages that just tell them, hey, you know, that's archaic and old fashioned. You don't need to follow that. Do whatever feels good. A fellow who is working with something called the Alliance Defending Freedom went to the University of Wisconsin at Madison, and he decided to stop. I'm giving you just a, a piece of this. This is a much longer, it's about two and a half minutes, but the actual video that I called this from was about five minutes long. He started asking them about the meaning of discrimination. You know, he pitched an idea at them. He said, should Christian bakers be forced to bake a cake for a same-sex wedding against the Christian bakers' beliefs? And the students all said, yeah, oh, of course, yes, mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, rotten Christians. And then he said, so a dressmaker out there doesn't like the political uh, opinions of Donald Trump. Should the dressmaker uh, refuse to make a dress for the first lady? Yes, uh, uh, why would you? Uh, uh. Despite the fact that the first lady is a unique individual and she is not the president. And then he decided to turn the questioning around, and it shows you that the position of liberals is really untenable and wholly illogical. You have the right to opt out of business that you might not want to associate yourself with. Yes. Okay. So if you were, let's say, a, a Muslim singer here in Madison, and a church approached you for an Easter service for you to sing, do you have the right to opt out of that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you have the, op you have the right to opt out of doing whatever you want. <sighs> I think, you, yeah, yeah, I think, I guess so. That seems like such an unusual circumstance that uh, they would want them, like that the Christian church would want to force a Muslim singer to sing at their church if they didn't want to. I would feel like if I was Muslim, I would, it would be hard to work with someone. Yeah, if that goes against your religious views, I feel like, you know, do I turn that down? Okay. So there's actually a city ordinance that would allow those groups to sue you by opting out, by turning down their, their request. Do you think that's a good law? Probably not. So. The law is saying what now that the that the Muslim singer can opt out? Can't on, opt out. Cannot opt out. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, that's what the law says. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that's an okay law? I don't believe so. No, no, not at all. That's. I feel like that goes against people's rights. So pretty much, do you think that a law should exist that would force somebody to do the work? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So let's say you're a Christian photographer here in Madison, yeah. and someone approached you to do a same-sex wedding. Would would mm. that be hateful or discriminatory to opt out of that? Uh. 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 I don't know. Uh. Do you have the right to do that? Uh. uh. In that situation, probably not because that uh, would bring up some legal issues, I, uh, I would suspect. Like that city ordinance, right? Yes, yeah. The uh, one that you didn't agree with? Yeah. Yeah. If it was switched to like Christian views or something, so they wouldn't be able to do that. And also, I don't know, I just think it should be like fair all around. I think it's very difficult to determine uh, what reason it is that you make that decision unless you're very steadfast in your religion saying no this is wrong mm -hmm. in which case that's yeah you're a jerk for doing that <laughs> so your political views your ideas and kind of world view is okay to say no to business but your religious views aren't there you go and that's what we're dealing with and they're indicative of a large swath of the country now
Judge Andrew Napolitano once said that the courts cannot determine the depth of your religious conviction. If you say that you have religious convictions, the law protects you. You heard a student there say, well, it would depend on the depth of their Christian faith. But again, the law is, if you walk into a court and you say, I'm not doing it because I'm a Christian, the judge can't say, well, you missed church six weeks ago, so therefore you've got to do it. That can't happen. That can't, and yet, this is the world liberals are trying to craft for all of us. It's 46, 917. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. There has been a deliberate effort to dumb down the populace of this country for this very reason. This is why you have government schools in the first place. This is why you have efforts by mainstream media to change the conversation. Do you understand the direction we're going? This is why you have Orwellian use of language from the American left, and even not always on the American left, but from a great many people who are just politically correct or in the establishment. For all of these very reasons. We're coming up on a break in just a moment. We'll take some of your telephone calls following that. I do want to point out, of course, you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, that means you can listen to us live anywhere all over the world if you have access to the web. Just click on the Listen Live icon. I wanted to also mention before the break, I had an email earlier in the program from Russell Smith at Western Visions, Inc. Uh, Russell is the man who created this notion that high-end restorations were something that people in the Magic Valley were looking for, and he was right. We have so many historic properties in this area, it's a shame to see them all go by the wayside. And a great many people out there are doing what they can to to restore these properties. And they're calling Western Visions, Inc. to come out and actually do the work. Because Western Visions will come out and what they'll do is they'll look over your old property and then they'll call you in on a day-to-day basis to consult you on how you should best go about restoring that property. And I mentioned I got to tour one of the, uh, one of the fine properties they're restoring in Cassia County a few weeks ago right down to the fact that they're removing some of the big support beams. They keep the house jacked up, and then they put in a brand-new beam, but it's a historic-looking beam. And uh, they, they also will come in, and they'll rewire the entire house, and they'll install all of the light. The wiring in the walls, people aren't going to see that. So that's the one thing that's very modern in the restoration. But, of course, it will keep you safe, and it'll keep your, uh, well, they're using a lot of high-end lighting technology. I wanted to point that out as well. And in fact, that high-end technology, some of the LED lighting will pay for itself in a few years, and who knows, in 15 years, maybe even pay for the entire renovation project. And then some, multiple times over in the decades to come. If you'd like to know more, you've got to get in touch with Western Visions, Inc. The website is western-visions.com. That's western-visions.com. 20 minutes after 9 o'clock. We're at 47 on our way, potentially before the day is over with, to 70. Wanted to uh, say thank you, first of all, for tuning in this morning. We were discussing media's efforts to break down the historic pillars of our culture a short while ago, and that is entertainment media, mainstream media, as well as academics. 923, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX. NewsRadio1310.com. We're at 47. Telephone number to reach the show, 736-0300. That's 736-0300. Caller, thank you for your patience. You're up next. Hi, you're on the air. Go ahead. I was just thinking about the story you played a minute ago. Sure. What if, what if the situation was a Muslim photographer, a man who had a, he was Muslim, had a photography business, and he was forced to take pictures at a gay wedding. I have not yet even heard of that happening, but I do know that there's a video from Steve Crowder, uh, who's the host of the radio show Louder with Crowder. Steve Crowder put up a video where he and a friend went into some bakeries in Dearborn, Michigan that were owned by Muslims, and started and, and they, they, they portrayed themselves as being two gay men and said, will you bake us a cake for our wedding? And the baker said, absolutely not. We will not take part in it. But no one has gone in and brought charges against those bakers as they've done against Christian bakers. Right. It just seems like such a double standard. Again, 
uh, thank you for the call. American uh, American leftists, I brought it up yesterday, they believe every other culture in the world is equal. And, and they'll tell you that even a headhunter in Borneo has an equal culture. The only culture they don't like is ours. We have another caller with us. You're on the air at 925. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, Bill. Uh, the media is not the cause of the problem in America. The media is merely a symptom of the sick minds of American Christians. They have turned away from God. It's written in Scripture uh, just clear as day. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, but every single one of them are. Make no covenants with them, nor with their God, but everyone does. You know, come out from among them and be you separate. No one will. How can you expect to blame it on the media when Christians won't even follow God? And I think uh, that you're spot on when it comes to the media is, a, is in many cases, a direct reflection of the American people and the American people's values because the American people buy the media's products in large numbers. Thank you much for the telephone call. You're up next. You're on the air on KLIX. Yes, thank you, Bill. Uh, one comment I'd like to make, everything nowadays is about race. Everything is about race. When you look at politics, it's race identity. And the Christian religion is a white race religion. That's why they bash it. That's why they hate it. That's why they got to tear it down. Because it's, not a, not if you're a, a Coptic, if you're a Coptic Christian in North Africa, you're not a you're not Caucasian. Well, we're talking fundamental uh, battles of religion over there that have been happening for two thousand years, also uh, between the Christians and the Muslims. Uh, they're on the front lines of that. Over here in America, we've got a different dynamic going. And it's all about politics and, and uh, race. One of the best, the most, what I'd call a, a live churches I ever visited was a black church in Utica, New York, where people were up dancing in the aisles. And so how do you excuse Martin Luther King and some of those individuals as well? Well, um, Martin Luther King is used for both sides. Uh, they That's usually true. bash the other side. Uh, you see that happen all the time. Sure. And uh, <clears throat> there again, the Christian religion, a lot of the conservative blacks that belong to Christian religion, when they argue politics, they're bashed for being Christian or being conservative or being Uncle Tom. And it all boils down to race again. Well, there's, a, a, you know, there's an element of that, I would imagine, and I thank you for the call. In King's case, I don't know that he would have been uh, very happy uh, becoming the left says, well, this is what he wanted, and then the right says, well, he was a Republican. Being a registered Republican doesn't necessarily mean that <laughs> he was disappointed in Southern Democrats at the time. And so we tend to, you know, it's like when I watch, a, a, I'll be watching a show on Fox, for instance, and I'll see Ann Coulter, and over, for the most part, I like what she has to say, but she'll start saying, oh, the Democrat Party founded the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah, but... Nobody from that era who was involved in the founding is still alive and, in fact, likely have been dead for well over 100 years. So we hear those arguments coming from our own side, and it's like, you know, that's why sometimes we get mocked as conservatives is because we get bogged down in that. And it's, I know it's funny to yank the chains of Democrats, but there aren't any Democrats who are alive today who are involved in that. And so we tend to, we tend to use that to make our argument but it's got nothing to do with modern America, at least the people who are here today in modern America. And I think King would be disappointed that he gets used to in this tug of war, uh, as far as that goes. But it also, the caller, when he brings this up, it, 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 it's a reflection, too, of what Steve King, the congressman from Iowa, said a couple of days ago when he pointed out if we'd stop killing tens of millions of babies uh, in abortion mills, that we wouldn't have to be importing people from other cultures to come live in this country and even... A lot of his fellow Republicans, oh, you shouldn't say that, because they're trying to curry favor with some newspaper editorialist somewhere. But he's right. You know, he's absolutely spot on right. He made no comments about people's color or their ethnicity. He even said in one interview, I'm not talking about anybody's blood. I'm just talking about the values that people believe in. And that upsets the left to no end, the thought that somehow that there is truly an American culture and that it's worth saving. We've got a hard break. Can't avoid that. More of your telephone calls on the way on News Radio 1310, KLIX at NewsRadio1310.com. It's 46. Bill Colley with you this morning until 10 o'clock.
I was thinking about something the caller said in the last segment of the program, and it's this. You become who you associate with. When I was a kid in elementary school and junior high, I was surrounded by friends who came from really good families, good people. Uh, These were not troublemakers by any means. And then it wasn't a huge move. I grew up in a town of about, there were fewer than 2,000 of us. But we moved to the other side of town, and I didn't see as much of my other friends. Well, uh, could have bicycled a few minutes across town and seen them. But I started hanging out with a new group of guys in the neighborhood and at a local park. And we'd go there, we'd shoot basketball. But a lot of them, I noticed, would they'd pull up next to the, to the hoops, and they would open the doors to their cars, and they'd sit in their cars and guzzle beer and do those things. And it wasn't long before. I was only 16 years old. I was hanging out with these guys and... And I wasn't in much trouble at the time, but probably was headed that way. My dad was not happy. My mom was not happy. And uh, and eventually, by the time I turned 17, I started hanging out again with all of my buddies who I'd been going to school with since we started driving and we could get around a little bit more. But I had interests that were more, they were more tightly tied to what their interests were. We'd, We'd just go grab a bite to eat at Burger King or go to the movies or something like that, and we stopped associating with all of the guys who were just, you know, lollygagging around the park. And it, it, it turned my life around. My grades got better again, and, uh, and things started to improve in my life. Well, those guys who were hanging around the park, most of them, and one of my teachers was right, they'll never amount to anything in life. And he was, he was, he was so spot on. I should point out that teacher had been a Methodist minister before going into school teaching, so maybe he knew something about uh, of which he talked. A- and that comes down to this whole notion of what this Rod Dreher is saying. Don't associate with bad people because it will harm you in your faith as well. We have a caller with us. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Good morning, Bill. You know, just as a suggestion, and this is my opinion only, it's, it's highly possible that the Christians are being attacked majority because we're more like your conscience than anything else, and no one likes being told they're doing something wrong. Therefore, they rebel against your own conscience, which in this case would be religious people saying, well, this is what we should be doing, and this is not what you are doing. Well, and they and then they try to turn around. They'll point to the they'll point to figures about, for instance, uh, people who live in the, the the deep southern states known as the Bible Belt, and claim that there are more drug problems there, or they'll claim that people there are uh, more apt to divorce, and they'll throw all of these things out there and say, "You think you're better than I am, but you know." Well, it's not that we think we're better; it's just that we acknowledge our faults. Well, yeah, we acknowledge our faults. Per- Christian people are not perfect by, by any means or stretch of the word. Tell me about it. I got I had to sit next to the gossips in church the other day again. It just goes on and on and on. <laughs> you know, and, and, and we try as hard as anybody else, and we fail as much as anybody else. But you hit the nail on the head. We are trying, and we're trying to go in the right direction. We don't always make it, but when you're trying, when you're being reminded that no, I don't want to do this because my religion doesn't want to associate. No, I don't associate. It's not a good word. Participate in a gay wedding, then all of a sudden it's a conscious issue, and that, and that needs to be attacked. And they won't attack the Muslim guys for doing the same thing because the Muslim guys would beat, beat them senseless. Yeah, there. I think there's part of that in that is that they're very afraid. And and I thank you much for the call. I heard such a an argument a few years ago from of all people, a liberal college professor, who said he wasn't going to criticize Muslims because he was afraid of what they might do. This was after Muslims were killing cartoonists and and the various people in Europe because they were criticizing the Prophet Muhammad openly, and they were paying for it with their lives. And I said, well, that's, you know, for, for you, you have all this tough talk when it comes to Christians, but you're acknowledging a Christian isn't going to come stick a, a manifesto into your chest using a knife to pin it there. 
or blow up a restaurant that you happen to be sitting in. And yet you somehow, you, you treat the Christians as if they're the problem, and, and yet even the comedian, as he's called, I don't know that he's that funny, Bill Maher, has said in the past that liberals are deluding themselves when they attack Christians and they ignore the greater threat from at least one other faith. 939, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. I had my delicious shake this morning as part of the Total Body Transformation System. Some of you know I've been, uh, I've been taking part in this, and I'm down in the neighborhood of 70 pounds over the last few months. The system was developed by a company that's been in business now for over 20 years with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. The diet is not some sort of fad diet. It is a healthy way to lose weight, and you can still enjoy the foods you like. I wanted to point out as well that the dietary replacement is often healthier than some of the meals that you would be eating. You'll burn six times more fat and lose eight times more weight than normal results from diet and exercise alone. The average participant drops 22 pounds and loses four inches off the waist in 60 days. If you'd like to know more, call Marketing Executive Don Chandler in Twin Falls, 208-731-3560. Don's also a client. His number 731-3560. Don lost over 50 pounds himself. I remember a few years ago watching Dennis Miller on Bill O'Reilly's program, and he was talking about how he just got sick of liberals and won't have anything to do with them now in his personal relationships. It may have hurt his career. I, I don't know. I guess he's still making a buck, and that's allowing him to pay the bills. He called it, he said, the problem with liberals is their overwrought earnestness. That was a great definition. And then I was reading a story about a, a famed Hollywood producer, movie producer, who had been a longtime liberal, and then he had an epiphany one day while he was just drive, he was taking his wife shopping. He was driving down the street, and they were listening, as they always did, to NPR, National Palestinian Radio. And he's driving along, and he said, I'm hearing somebody talk on there about, you know, just whining about all of their problems and how they're so deeply offended by everything under the sun. And he said, I just suddenly thought to myself, shut the heck up. <laughs> and he realized during the course of his drive that he could no longer support NPR and he could no longer support liberalism. And since then, he's become a dyed-in-the-wool conservative. Now, how does this happen? It's a moment maybe where people have a chance to reflect I do some of my best thinking while I'm driving. I don't drive a lot, which probably says I'm not doing some of my best thinking. But that's the point. He had a moment, and he wasn't even in conversation with his wife. He was just listening to the radio, and, and it, just, it just came across. It was like, wow, this is, this is just you know, a moment of clarity. And I think that that sometimes does happen. One of the reasons that the left... Uh, and, and, you know, it, 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 Donald Trump is certainly no paragon of moral virtue. He wasn't elected because he was. On the other hand, he does respect people who have moral virtue. That part of it is at least clear. I read a great piece about why liberals are so disgusted with Trump, not because he's the most conservative person to ever come along, and he's certainly not the most Christian person to ever occupy the White House. But a writer at American Thinker by the name of Jeffrey Folks had this, uh, this piece published on March 10th, so a few days back. And I got down to the bottom of, uh, bottom of page number one, and he says, why is it that Trump poses such an existential threat to progressivism? Existential, existential threat means it could be the end of Hollywood liberalism or liberalism all over America. He says, why is Trump so much more danger, dangerous than Chris Christie or Marco Rubio or Ted Cruz or whoever else may have been the Republican Party nominee. And then I thought this was very telling. It is because, unlike those who merely oppose the left, Trump dissolves the opposition by holding it up to ridicule. With his laser-like tweets and incisive wit with his very presence, Trump brings the preposterousness of the left's positions into the light. And that's true. The left is finding it increasingly difficult. Think about that story that got some press the last few days. In Iowa, home state of Steve King, we should point out, there was a basketball playoff 
high school basketball playoff where the fans of one rural school showed up all decked out in American colors, red, white, and blue. The urban high school was angry and demanded apologies and said that it was racist to show up wearing the stars and stripes or bringing them to the arena. Why? Because there are a number of people who go to that high school who come from refugee families. Now, if people come here legally and would like to be Americans as they did for 200 years, and they love the flag and they love the opportunity this country offers to them, I guess I don't have a problem with that. But the problem among these modern refugees that come here, the first thing they do is show up and say, mm, I need a prayer rug at school. And I need these other demands met. Infidel, you will listen to me. Thank you, by the way, for the welfare check. They come here and then, how is it that the American flag is in any way racist? You came here, pledge allegiance to this dang country. Otherwise, get the heck out. If you can't do, and yet liberal media is on board with them. But when you really boil this down, if the flag is offensive, that's a symbol of the country. Then the country is offensive. If it's that bad, then why did you come here in the first place? And then if you ask them that question, oh, well, uh, it's because uh, my country is bad. Well, then get off your lazy bottom and go do what our founding fathers did. Stage a revolution. 948, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. We're at 48. You're up next. You're on the air on KLIX. Yes, it's not only the uh, news media, it's our government's position against uh, Christianity. Uh, there's been active persecution of uh, Christians in the military, encouraging uh, uh, court martials and uh, discharge. My own denomination had a a chaplain that consoled a man that it was un, it was uh, uh, a bad idea to have sex out of marriage, and he was forced out of the service after 16 honorable years in the service. And that, you know that that's not the first time I've heard about that happening to chaplains. In other words, what do they think a chaplain, a, a Christian chaplain, is going to talk about? Apparently, if you just want somebody to be a psychiatrist, hire those people instead. But why have a chaplain in the first place? Well, why are we why are we attacking chaplains? And it's not only chaplains; it's individual soldiers, and marines, and sailors that are being attacked for for stating their their faith. Here's the other part of this too. I guess they expect that a chaplain is just going to hold somebody's hand during a tough moment. The military itself frowns upon adultery, right? That's correct. So, uh, but a chaplain can't do it. But the military itself could drum that individual out. Well, I think it's all due to our M M&M and M president, you know, Ma- Muslim Marxist, <laughs> uh, and I, I'm hoping that Trump will change that. Yeah, there's a lot of residues still left over from the, the the last eight years. Thank you for the telephone call. It's it's. I've been reading about these these chaplains who are being warned not to talk about their faith. Again, logically, then why are they there? Well, you know, you need to tell everybody that I'm okay. You're okay. That shows you that the people in charge don't understand what faith is really all about. But then again, that's like a lot of the wider culture. Uh, I, I remember years ago, I was talking about something on a radio show, and some guy called me, and he, he had whining lib written all over his voice. And he said, he said, you conservatives need to follow Jesus' teachings. And I said, which are? And then there was silence, and then click. But there was a long silence as if, well, you know, from what he heard about, he watched a couple of cartoons about Christmas when he was a kid. And, you know, Jesus is Santa Claus and give you whatever you want. And <laughs> But but again, we we have so many people out there who they got no idea. Uh, Lon Solomon, who's one of the best known pastors in America, he has a huge mega church in McLean, Virginia. Solomon, you can tell by the name, he was born Jewish. Uh, he became, he still considers himself Jewish, but while he was a chemist as a young man, he met a, a street preacher and they got to talking and it wasn't long before Solomon was so attracted to this message that he ended up becoming a preacher himself. Solomon told the story, he went to a workout club and he was at the workout club 
And he said most people won't talk to him at the workout club because they don't want to talk. They're uncomfortable to talking uh, about talking with a preacher during you know just daily life. But a fellow came up to him and he said, I, he said, I think I need to come to your church, Pastor. And Solomon said, Why is that? And the guy said, Because I need religion in my life. I, you know, give me a little order. Said, Solomon said, I don't do religion. And he said, What do you mean you don't do religion? You pastor this huge church in McLean, Virginia. Solomon said, I do personal relationships with God. Well, now the guy was a little intrigued and said, tell me a little bit about this. And they got talking. And then finally, he mentioned something about how the faith has certain demands. And he started going through those. And the guy said, well, that's exclusionary. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> we don't really allow people to come into church and murder people, for instance. Uh, that would, And I know it might hurt the feelings of the murderer that we don't, uh, we don't allow them to do it during the course of our service. But... You've got a leftist out there who just can't fathom that that you know that, that that's how it works. That's exclusionary. Uh, so are most other religions. We have a caller with us. Caller, you're up next at nine fifty two. You're on the air on KLIX. Well, I'm sure the person that told you that you needed to follow Jesus' teachings was to um, go away, be meek, be um, humble, be afraid, and shut your mouth. And because uh, that's how they think it is. And so, you know, uh, well, they think you're the, a doormat or you should be a doormat. Right. And and then they like to think that somehow Jesus was a loving man, but he also stood firm in his convictions. And, uh, you know, the money changers saw a different side of it because it was a vile thing they well, were doing. I'll, I sorry to interrupt, but here's here's an analogy to that. My mother was a loving woman. But on the other hand. If I was a bad boy, she got the belt out, and I got it across my backside. One more quick thing, and I haven't been able to listen, but I hope you haven't already touched on this. But last night, the head of Planned Parenthood was on with Tucker, and he kept asking her, at five weeks, you have a heartbeat. What is that? What would you call that that you're murdering? And she would she would never answer it. And And, and, and in the end, he says, well, this has been a very shallow interview. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, thank you. Speaking of which, I'm glad the caller let us into this. This is Dawn, uh, and I guess it's Leggins. Is that how she pronounces it? She's from the abortion mill Planned Parenthood, uh, and she is getting the Tucker, the, the Tucker Carlson treatment, which is I, it's a shame I can't stay up and watch Tucker Carlson later into the evening. Planned Parenthood believes in the wisdom and power of the individual to decide what care is right for them and what doctor they should go to. And no one's going to bully, threaten, or bribe Planned Parenthood to not have that view. But one and a half million people are at risk of losing access to cancer screenings, STD testing and treatment, and birth control because of this plan by Paul Ryan and Donald Trump to take that care away. And of course, people don't, uh, they come to Planned Parenthood and we get reimbursed for providing preventive health care. We don't get a budget item, a uh, line item, and we don't get uh, a big check. We get reimbursed like any hospital for providing a pap test or a breast okay. cancer screening. But that doesn't, that doesn't change the question, which is why include abortion if the services provided are necessary. Why don't just take that out? It is a controversial thing. A lot of people think it's murder. Why don't just take that out and then taxpayers can feel good about subsidizing the rest of your services? Taxpayers don't pay for abortion services. They help reimburse things like pap tests and cancer screenings. But women deserve access to the full range of reproductive health care, and that includes safe legal abortion. And so Planned Parenthood is going to let women make the choices they want to make about their care and go to the okay. doctor they want to go to. She called it safe legal abortion. I think you could make an argument that none of these things, procedures they call abortion, in fact, aside, are safe. Uh, number two, when she says, we don't get money directly from the government for abortion. Well, the government's giving you a pile of money, and you don't necessarily put it into a budget line for abortion. It means you can put it into a budget line for something else, which means that you can then take money you have elsewhere in the office and put it into abortions. So, therefore, indirectly, government is underwriting abortions. Please make that clear. Uh, secondly, when the woman, and a caller pointed out, she couldn't answer the question about what makes that, you know, at five weeks, if there's a heartbeat, is that a human being? Well, what are they trying to tell us? No, it's a worm? Then does that mean that worms are having puppies? 
and our dogs having cats and our cows having horses. No, a cow has a, a, a calf, but it's a cow, right, or a bull. It's, it's still a, it's from that bovine family. And horses uh, give birth to little equine uh, animals, uh, which is a Greek word for, of course, horses. So whatever you have growing in you, it's not a worm, it's not a puppy, it's not a horse. If you're a human being, a woman, it's called a baby. In other words, it's a human being. And again, they can't come to grips with this. And even though science is showing more and more the pain that is caused not only to that child, they'd like to ignore it because they call it preventative medicine, as if somehow being pregnant is an illness. Then how the heck did they all get here? They don't like to talk about these things because it exposes the horrid truth that what they're really doing is just looking to cat around, and that's not to say they're going to have kittens, but that if we do this and we, we, we say it's wrong and you can't do it any longer, that you cannot harm another human being, that it might cut into their catting time. And I know it annoys them to no end to say that, but it applies to the men they're involved with as well, if that helps. We've got to wrap up for today. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. On News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. God willing, if the creek don't rise, I'll be allowed to come back and do this all over again tomorrow morning between 8 and 10 o'clock. The Rush Limbaugh program is coming up next. It was nice hearing Mark Stein yesterday. Nothing against Limbaugh, but Mark Stein is one of those people who can really expose the, the liberal hypocrisy well, which is why he is so despised. He got kicked out of the country of his birth for that reason. I also wanted to point out coming up after one o'clock news, Sean Hannity's program here on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Following the news from Fox at four o'clock today, the Glenn Beck program, Dave Ramsey from seven until 10 o'clock tonight. I didn't have to guess at that. I just had one of those brain freezes for a moment. Hey, it happens. I'm not 25 any longer. 